Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. I'm your host, Larry Lawson, coming to you from the X-Zone Broadcast Network Southern Command Post in beautiful East Central Florida. And uh, folks, got a, got a show tonight that I've, I've really been anxious to put on because it's, uh, frankly, uh, a topic that is one of the hottest topics in the field of paranormal uh, research and investigation. Not a new one, but definitely one of the hottest ones, and it has to do with instrumental transcommunication, of which one part of it is our familiar EVPs or electronic voice phenomenon. To discuss uh, this topic with us tonight is Mr. Keith J. Clark, founder and board member of iDigital Medium, a nonprofit organization for research, education, and preservation of data regarding life after death and beyond. Keith is an avid experimenter and leader in the field of ITC, a form of communication with non-physical people using electronics. As part of the generation that became familiar with EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon, during the movie White Noise in 2005, Keith began experimenting with first sound and then pictures. He began experiencing strange voices and sounds during his experiments with radio and continued for years in pursuit of what is now known as direct radio voice. In 2007, he discovered that people in spirit could send their pictures by using sound only. This is a very rare form of ITC and is largely unknown. In 2016, he be, things began to take an even stranger turn. Voices were still heard when there was no radio used in the experiment, and this was quite by accident when trying to produce the famous Spiritcom technique. Over the next year and a half, Keith and co-founder Ron Rees experimented with synthetic voices, now dubbed developmental streams. Keith is the creator of ITC Bridge and iDigital Media websites devoted to furthering knowledge of life after death and communication with spirit. Together with a group of like-minded, passionate volunteers, they are the iDigital Media team. By day, Keith is an information technology professional, supporting one of the largest corporate law firms in the world. He also served our country in the United States Army, serving in the intelligence, intelligence branch. His uh, website is uh, iDigitalMedium.com. And uh, Keith Clark, welcome to Paranormal Stakeout. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure. I appreciate you inviting me. Well, uh, this this topic is is really timely. Uh, I, I see it as one of the possible directions that we can start to take to developing new ways of investigation in this field. But I look at, I look at ITC as uh, well. We've all looked at it as uh, EVPs, but it's much more than that. Tell me a little bit about what tr instrumental transcommunication is. Sure. I mean, the paranormal field is seen to be a generally, uh, I guess you could say, what's not understood about, um, well, spirit and other types of strange occurrences. ITC, ITC is instrumental transcommunication. Uh, to abbreviate it or describe it briefly, it's essentially communication with people in spirit using electronics. Kind of a broad term. It's been around now, or at least been named that for about you know, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And generally people that work with ITC have already accepted life after death through their own research or whatever it is that they have done, their personal experiences. And they've gone on to say, how can I use this in experiments? How can I use this in a personal experience to uh, create new stuff, basically. Okay. And so well, ITC is sort of a, a subgenre, personally. Okay. Well, it's not new. I mean, uh, Edison talked about it, and then you had Jurgensen, you had Rodive. They're back in the into the twenties and the, up through the sixties and seventies. So this is not an, a new topic, is it? Def, definitely not. And let's not forget about Tesla. But <laughs> oh, Tesla <laughs> yeah. on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we talk about EVPs. That's a common thing in the paranormal investigative research field. But you're also saying photographs and other meth other items come through uh, or are used in this experiment. So tell me correct. more about that. Tell me more about that. I started out in EVP, and actually a friend watched the movie White Noise, and he called me and he said, have you heard about this? And I said, no. And he said, did you know that it's real? And so I... I had a little bit of interest in it, 
but it wasn't until six months later that I actually read one of the three books by uh, Sarah Easter and then also Friedrich Jurgensen, which were two of the pioneers. And I, so I tried it, you know, pretty simple. And I heard something on the recording that indicated to me that I needed to look a little further. And then, um, I won't, I won't, will not exaggerate. I dove in head first. <laughs> it was something yeah. that I found to be very interesting. And the more I experimented, you know, just like most people, we become creative, we evolve, and you begin experimenting first with EVP. And then you say, well, let's do this. Let's try taking pictures of orbs. And then let's do this. Let's try taking pictures in, say, video experiments, video ITC or water ITC. And then you begin to become more confident and always amazed at what you're experiencing. And then at some point, you begin to realize that you can do this with anything. And that's where you get into a really strange area that's still, I would say, brand new, quite misunderstood, uh, even by those that experience it, including myself. Mm-hmm. What do you mean misunderstood? Explain that a little bit further. I'm, how is it misunderstood if you're hearing voices? And I want to talk to you about the science in a minute. Sure. How do you, how do you see it being misunderstood? Um, I would say that, you know how most EV, EVP phrases, when you hear them, they tend to be short, you know, one or two words at the most, maybe a sentence, you know, if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. But then when you can be, begin to experiment more, we actually discover that perhaps those are only the couple of words that you're hearing. Perhaps that is the only the little bit of energy that formed itself properly. And as we continue, we're starting to see that, um, and we'll get into that later, but we are a part of the experiment. So instead of saying, I'm taking this tape recorder, well, we don't use tape anymore, do we? This digital voice recorder, I'm pressing the record button, and I am observing something that's occurring. It's now shifting into the, we are a part of the environment that is creating that phenomenon. Okay. All right. Well, that's then, what we're shifting towards. Okay. That's interesting. Well, then tell, talk to me about the science of it then. Um, we, most of us that have been involved in the field of paranormal research investigation have heard EVPs in one way or another. Uh, there's some new things coming out with uh, different devices, Ghost Box, Frank's Box. You've got the, the Wonder Box uh, and the portals that are out there. Give me the science, Keith, so folks can understand what it is that's occurring. That's, that's a tall order. Um, I will begin by saying that I can't classify myself as a scientist. I can only explain things from my personal experience, and everybody's personal experience is different. Mm-hmm. I can say that once people become confident and they get past, there's, there's stages, as I see it, when you first begin experimenting. Is it real? Then you move on to, oh, my God, it's real. Then you move on to, holy crap, why doesn't everybody know about it? And then you can hit a frustration stage. Mm-hmm. And after that, we begin to experiment. And um, can you bring me back in the line? As to which particular? The science. Well, um, I, I'm going to say that <laughs> the science is, is nowhere near where it needs to be presently. I'm going to say that from my personal experience, I've experienced things that science can't even explain. And if I begin to try to explain them, um, I'd probably be, be laughed at lose some credibility. I'm going to say that on, on an atomic level, when we have that desire to connect, when we have that desire to communicate with spirit or whatever you prefer to call that energetic force, okay. we are in effect helping to create that force. That's the science behind it. We don't have anything to measure it yet, but I can guarantee you that we're going to start seeing things that will prove and demonstrate that there's a link between the experimenter and the, what we're actually recording. Okay, so you're yeah, actually I'm say that's the science behind it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're actually saying that there's a spiritual connection more than a a scientific experiment. Am I get am I reading that right? I don't want to label it just spiritual. I'm going to say that spiritual and science are starting to merge. They're going to find okay. everything everything that we call science now at one point used to be spiritual or unknown. Mm-hmm. Then once we have the science to measure, it, then we say, okay, now it's science. Well, before that, it was, you know, amazing, and we didn't understand it. I'm saying that we're going to find through the science that by people wanting to connect and turning on their instruments and having that desire, they're actually helping to create the effect that they're recording. 
Okay. And that's the actual science that I would like and, to help try to paint a picture of. Well, one of the things that, that worries me about the field, and, and, I've, and I've seen some success in, in this area, but I don't know that folks really understand how it's come into play. You go back to Konstantin Rodai, for example, and Jurgensen. They were dealing with radios and frequencies. Um, and the theory has always been that um, frequency and vibration is a part of this. And that seems to be what, uh, what they were working on. I mean, Jurgensen, what he was, he was recording bird sounds. And as he was recording bird sounds, got voices coming through. And then they began experimentation with frequency and vibration. Is that where you're going with this? I would say yes, but let's look at it from Jurgensen being a person that was already a creative person that was already had the mindset to help manifest that phenomena. What I'm saying is he's actually assisted in creating that phenomena. <laughs> Why doesn't everybody that records BBP get the same type of BBP? That's a good question for you. And, that, and that's an excellent question, and one that people have been asking for a long time. And when we come back after this first break, we're going we're gonna to explore that a little bit more. So, folks, stay with us. You're listening to Paranormal Stakeout on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. We'll be back right after these messages. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is. But you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com.
And we are back on Paranormal Stakeout with my guest tonight, Keith J. Clark of iDigital Medium. Um, folks, if you want to hear not only this show, but all of the other great programming here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, and you want to hear it on your phone, all you need to do is dial 605-477-9614, and you can get all of your favorite shows in the Exxon Broadcast Network 24-7, 365. So write down that number and visit us and listen to all the great shows. Okay, moving moving back towards, um, I guess, the science of this whole thing and, and, and where it's going. Um, like I said, when I first got into the field, EVPs and the collection of voices on uh, recorders that we got were probably one of the more, more exciting, if not more common events that we had in investigations. And the theory went back, once again, to frequency and, and vibration. And, uh, you know, when you look at a uh, ro- rhodi- rhodive device, which is a, a basically a crystal used in an old AM radio, transmitting a short p- distance to a, 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 some sort of a, a microphone or, I'm sorry, a, a amplifier to a microphone and a recorder. That was some of the earliest stuff that was done. How does that compare to what you're trying to do now? And I, and I want to talk a little bit more also, not only the, the audio stuff, but the water ITC and things like that. How does that those early experiments compare to the experiments you're conducting now? I think that um, I kind of went off into unknown areas, to be honest with you. Total surprise. Did not expect okay. to. You just begin experimenting, and then all of a sudden things happen. And then you continue because you believe in it. I Mm -hmm. think that for each one of those individuals, they had a really deep desire to persevere and and to understand, and it keeps coming back to that individual connection. But I guess the whole whole purpose of me speaking in this manner is to let people know, we always look at somebody else. We say, oh, Spiritcom is awesome. I wish I could do that. Or, you know, uh, the things that Ravi did, you know, those are amazing. I wish I could do that. And... Once people get to the point, what I've seen, once they get to the point to where they're confident and they say, you know what, I am an energetic force. I have energy. I have the desire, the will, and I can cultivate this. I mean, so mm-hmm. what we're going to end up seeing is we're seeing a lot of people that have, you could call them special abilities, you know, like X-Men. And in the, in the actuality is that all of us have these things already. And so what our team's trying to do is we're trying to take the lessons of shall we say, the older generation, the previous generation, sure. the a- AAVP, the World ITC, the Mark Macy, you know, the George Meek, all that stuff. And they went at it, but they went at it from the scientific aspect. And what they got out of it was, we still need to develop as people, as, as a human race. And so ITC and the paranormal community are going to merge in that direction. They're going to start to say, you know, it's about the inside. It's about who we are, you know, what we desire. It's not all of, always about the equipment. You could have somebody, from what I've seen, it's going to sound crazy, but you can believe in something enough that you can create it in physical matter through pure thought. Ah, that's an excellent point. We've actually discussed it on the show. Is, and is this the direction we're going? Are, is the pow- untapped power of our own mind actually creating some of this? And I think that's that's an important part of this whole process as we discover what's on the other side, how much of it is us. Um, but uh, would you agree, though, that for us to be able to, for lack of a better term, become more mainstream, don't you think scientific experiment and scientific results would gain us more credibility in the field? Oh, now, I, I am personally – I'm from, okay. I'm not. I am not um, downplaying folks that have have gifts. Not at all. But I don't know. I don't know if that's going to help us move to the future. We need hard evidence, and and that's where I see ITC heading. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, the thing is, with ITC and you know the paranormal field, we're so emotionally attached to it that. You know, sometimes we have to remove some of that. And yeah, so absolutely. essentially all, all we need, all we need right now for anybody listening and all the people out there, this is you. This is not somebody in another state, another country. This is you. All we need are people that research 
you know, do some self-education mm-hmm. and persevere. You got to be persistent. You got to do the same thing. You got to continue. You got to follow your intuition. This is all about intuition. I might be able to get faces out of, you know, pictures of the sun or something. And another person might be able to, I don't know, you know, you know, hear, hear spirit and cat meows. <laughs> the point is each person is going to develop something individually, but you're right. And, and so we just have to, to buckle down. And I would say you know, it's a difficult issue because a lot of people think, Oh, I've got to prove life after death. I can do it. It's on me. And that creates a lot of pressure and it also creates frustration. Well, it's it like anything else in life. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it's beyond even creating pressure. Once people feel they have to go it alone, then they don't get the benefit of what other people have learned or what other people have, have uh, gained access to in their experiments. And that's why I've been a big uh, advocate of working together as a community to, to push this right. forward. But I, I want to talk about your experiments for a second here, and I know you do quite a bit of them. Describe to me how you guys conduct your experiments, the checks and balances variables, what equipment you use. Uh, give me an idea, give us an idea of how you guys conduct these ITC experiments to get some of the things that you because I've seen some of your pictures they're, they're quite interesting sure I will say that uh, what I presently do is not on a scientific level uh, I've gotten to the point to where I trust intuition so I started out recording EVP mm-hmm. and I said I want to be like Mr. Marcello Bacci in Italy who has people come to his house and they hear their loved ones come through radio I want to be like him I turned on a radio and I left it on 24 hours a day. Okay. And that I started to hear voices through the radio. And then I said, I want to hear those voices better. So I started to pull out some audio filtering, filtering software, not knowing what I was doing. So let me make it a little clear. Let me remove some white noise. It got better and it got better and it got better. And I took a three or four year break. You know, life happens, moved to Florida. And then I turned it back on and began experimenting. And all of a sudden, I started hearing this, I, this strange noise on the radio, mm-hmm. and it continued. And there was these low tones. And the more I focused on it, the more they occurred. And I was recording 24 hours a day. I had a whole year of this recorded. First, it was one tone. And a couple of days later, it was two. And then the next week, it was 10. And it continued on and on. I realized that the more I focused on it, the more it happened, which was crazy. Mm-hmm. Because well, it took me a year to figure out what was happening. Mm-hmm. Have you have you been recording these voices? I mean, I know I've seen some on your website, but do you regularly record them? I do not regularly record. I've I've gotten past the stage to where I record, and basically I listen live every mm-hmm. day. I'll get in my car, I'll turn on one of our synthetic streams, I'll call it, and I'll listen to that live. When I get in the shower, I'll listen to it. <laughs> when I drive to work, I'll listen to it. Mm-hmm. When I could fall asleep, I listen to it for an hour. And so I'm, it's just going to sound really weird. That's where I really get out there. I went from the, the normal stuff to the, the strange stuff. I got to where I could start to hear voices and sound, and I did that intentionally. And now mm-hmm. I'm hearing voices and sound that nobody else hears voices in. Well, and that is, you know, that's a crazy area. But, but do you ever worry, though, that... <sighs> By not recording this, by not by not having a, a set of uh, a, a framework around what you're doing, for lack of a better word, that pe- people are not going to take this important information you're getting seriously simply because you've got no um, you've got no checks or balances. Does that concern you at all? No, I think my role specifically or individually, and also as a team, is to inspire more people. So. I get the ideas to do the experiments and I'm streaming them. I'm hoping that other people will have interest and that they will pick up these ideas and this inspiration themselves and that will blossom into other areas. I'm more of an ideas person. Um, It will come to a point where I do believe that I will have conversations. I don't know what form it will take, but what I have found is it takes consistency. Like if you wake up every day and you say, my goal is X, you will eventually experience X. But if you waver or falter, it will change. But how, 
without without checks and balances, without without framework around these experiments, how can you be sure that it is it's actual contact to the other side and not something that your your own the power of your own brain may be concocting? How can you mm-hmm. be sure? I can't. That's the thing. You hit you hit exactly on it. I've reached a point in my work that I do know that there are people that we shall say, you know, call referred to as on the other side. However, right. I can't even use that. I can't even use that limitation anymore. You know, who, it's an energetic force. It, it's people anywhere from any energy, from any time space. I don't even know to what degree. Um, so yes, I'm moving, I'm moving faster. I'm moving at a faster pace than the scientific role would allow believing that one day, um, the stuff I'm currently working on, the synthetic streams, I right. believe, here's, here's what's happening, and I will admit that I think this has been happening for decades, and we haven't, some people have had suspicions, but they haven't known it. When you listen to EVP or audio for extended periods of time, uh-huh. your mind will kick in, and um, let's just say that certain things you focus on will be exaggerated. And that's, what I'm, mind. A, and that's what I'm a little bit wor- worried about. Um, Listen, we're going to take our next break here. Stay with us, folks. we got a lot more to talk about on this, uh, this episode of Paranormal Stakeout. So we'll be back with you in just a few minutes after this break. This is the X, uh, Paranormal Stakeout on X-Zone Broadcast Network. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media. Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365 Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, after the worship of many gods, 
they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. And welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout with my guest tonight, uh, Mr. Keith J. Clark of iDigital Medium. Um, Keith, getting back to our discussion, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you've worked on now. Developmental streams uh, used to be it used to have another name, I believe. What what is that exactly? Sure, I'll try to summarize. Here's what I think has happened. Um, I was listening to a radio that I was filtering live, meaning I was cleaning up the audio to be able to understand it. At some point, I began to hear uh, voices and conversations, and I pursued it. And then we removed the radio. Mm -hmm. So there was no, so these are closed loop experiments, meaning I'll create a sound on the computer and that's what we use for the experiment. No recording, no voices, no sound banks as you would refer to them in the, in the paranormal apps. And we found that we could, uh, we could sustain a sound in which I was able to hear voice, not just myself, but other people. So let's think of it this way. Say you had two sine waves, just a, you know, eh, and another one like, eh. okay, well, it should sound different, but like spirit Kong. If you play those two together, here's, here's what I believe is happening. We reached a point where I suddenly realized that when you mix sound in a certain way and the outcome is unexpected, your brain will kick in and things will start to occur whether they be spiritually or whether they be mentally, physically, I can't really tell you. But I can tell you that basically voices come out of sounds that are just random sounds. That's what synthetic streams are presently, development streams we call them. So you're, you're talking about nothing to do with radio waves, just basically sound waves mixing together can Correct. create this. Okay, okay I, I've got to ask you this question. Again, those experiments that you've done um, – have you done any uh, any papers on them? Have you had the opportunity to re record them so other people can examine them? Any anything like, like that at all? I did I did a small private study, meaning uh, it was so far out there that I had asked six or seven people to listen to them over a period of a month. Only one person began to hear words, and the rest did not. Um, so it's still brand new territory, and that's also re the reason why it is on the website mm -hmm. yet. Now, you hit on something very important a second ago, you know, before the break, when you said, isn't there a concern that our minds can become involved and create some of this? And the answer is yes, absolutely, yes. But at the same time, that's also our greatest strength. So oh, I, we're I would also agree. Reaching, mm -hmm, yeah, we're coming to the area of education. Uh, I used to think that I've never, I haven't really had any bad experiences. So I haven't had any people, you know, cuss at me or tell me to shut up or anything like that with EVP. And I didn't know why other people did. And I just took it as for granted that if you focused on positive energy, that's what you would receive. Mm -hmm. And then I found some old, some old recordings and some old studies regarding related to physical mediumship. And I've discovered that being ignorant of protection doesn't mean that you are protected. <laughs> so just because we're not aware that there are good and evil forces does not mean that we're immune to good and evil forces. So I will say that the state of the mind is extremely important in all of this work that we do. It's very, very, very important, which is part of the reason why I haven't just thrown this out there. So, hey, everybody, take a listen, see what you think. Because if, if people start to um, have issues or hear things that are not beneficial to themselves as people, we can have some problems, but I can tell you that's direct, the direction it's heading. It's going to be so, released soon. We're going to let people listen to it. We're going to see what they think, what they feel, what they hear. And I'm going to say that we are going to find out. You're familiar with hemisync, right? Mm -hmm, yes. Now we're going to find out that there are other ways of utilizing sound that will, shall we say, induce mediumship or clairaudience. So, 
So once again, getting back uh, to your premise here is most of this is not is sound mixed with spiritual spiritual belief. Is, if I got that right. So I would say that in, in the end, it all comes down to your personal connection. Even if you don't know what that means or what it is, it all comes down to that the okay. energy. Mm-hmm. And that's what you is that part of what you call physical mediumship? Do, do I have that right? I, I, um, it is not associated with ITC. They've been two separate areas, but I think they will eventually find that there is a common denominator, which is the person. Uh, in physical mediumship, that person has a, a certain physical characteristics that allows fluids to be withdrawn from their body, and people in spirit, or you know, whatever you want to call them, ghosts, can materialize in a body and walk around and talk to people. So That's once not occurring again, with me yet. <laughs> okay. but, but once again, my, my concern here is that we're, we're putting this out here, and it's it's all spiritual in nature. We don't have any any anything done in the scientific method that helps us prove it. And in, and this is my opinion. Until we do that, we're going to have a tougher time proving our point, proving that there is something else out there. Now, let me ask you this: Water ITC. I think I know what that is. I've, I've seen some examples of what I believe it is. But can you describe water ITC to me? Uh, that was pretty strange too. It was uh, people took the idea of video feedback loop, video ITC, instead of the camera going to the TV and then looping back into the camera. Um, people started using light, and so light would reflect off water, and the waves would bend, and they would see strange things in the water. And that's been going on for probably a decade. It's it's still not even a a, a common art. I would say that there's probably I don't know fifty to maybe 200 people that have tried that. Mm-hmm. A lot of these areas that aren't really mainstream yet, I don't think. Um, are you aware of any, um, of any uh, controlled experiments along those lines at all? With water ITC, anything that's controlled with checks and balances? I am not, and I think it's going to be really hard to do that with visual ITC presently. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's why you know, when we, we work with the faces and sound, um, it's an area that I just basically don't have enough time to dedicate enough attention to focus on one thing. And, and you know, I, I hope in the future to be able to describe to people how to do these things themselves. Right now, you can record sound. And you can go use free software to look at the pictures of that sound. The people out there right now could be doing pictures of people in spirit in sound right now today. And so there is a shortcoming on my part of having the time to uh, educate people or to to assist in describing how these things occur, shall we say, presentation. Presentation is important. The preservation of this evidence is important too, and that's why I'm I'm very big. And when you when you uh, collect this type of evidence, because you know you've had some interesting things occur to you, but replicating it or showing the uh, the evidence of it can be tough because you're not recording it. And I, I, and I got a concern with that because that doesn't help the field move forward. Do you see where I'm coming from? Oh, yes. You're absolutely right. You're right. Yeah, I'm more of a t- – yeah, you're, exa- you're absolutely right, um, which is why we don't just focus on just my own personal experience. We also focus on what the what's occurring in the world as a whole. What about the rest of your team? What about sure. the rest of your team? What what are they doing? What are their what's their involvement at I, I Digital Media? Uh, some of them are kind of lone wolves. They work in their own areas and they're respected uh, in areas of EVP. Ron Reese, the co-founder, he he developed another stream and didn't call it synthetic, but we I ended up classifying it as the same kind of thing. Uh, and there are uh, teammates that work with the AREI, the Afterlife Education and research, and uh, Victor and Wendy Zama were closely associated with them, and we're associated with a gentleman in the United Kingdom who produces documentaries of life after death. And so there's a lot, a lot of teamwork going on because we found after a while that one person can't do it all. A lot of people have tried, but you know they do their best, and then it, you know, everybody eventually dims or fades. And so we're trying to figure out ways to, to work together 
to help that collective field of evidence, like you said, and also to make sure it doesn't disappear. You know, the previous generation is not going to be around forever. No, no, they're not. What, and, and what's got me concerned is that we get we we've, we've got evidence here, and we need we need to actually collect it and preserve it and and, and study it. The rest of the members of your team uh, are they? Do you have like team meetings where you collaborate and go over where everybody's at? Uh, any new breakthroughs they're having? Does that does that occur with you guys at all? We're currently reinventing ourselves. Um, I would say the boat the boat got ahead of the you know. The caboose got ahead of the train. They're moving mm-hmm. a little fast. And uh, so we just had our website redesigned. It's not complete yet. And again, the whole presentation aspect. But we will, and we will always have people continue to join together. One of the things that you'll find interesting is that uh, there are some technical people on our team. And uh, I envision in the future that there will be a committee of people in the paranormal and ITC communities that um, – We'll sit together, and there'll be a preservation committee. They'll say, hey, what's most important that's out there? What's at risk? You know, you look at, like, physical mediumship. There are still people tr- There are still people converting audio tapes to digital format. Yep. That not, that there's still all these things out there that are at risk right now. And it's just like, you know, save the tree, save the planet. You know, how many of us are saying, let's save our history? I, I agree. History history is just a part of this whole thing, and I think that's my biggest concern is that we're not doing enough to scientifically move forward and, and, and using that in conjunction with the, the spiritual world. But we can talk more about that in a few seconds. Uh, we're going to take our final break here, folks, so if you'll uh, hang in there with us, we've got one more section. This is Paranormal Stakeout, and we'll be back right after these messages. of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci-Fi and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, 
finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From Out of the Woodwork, we'll take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. And welcome back to this final section tonight with my guest, Keith J. Clark from iDigital Medium. Um, want to make a comment, folks, on, once again, if you want to hear these great shows on the Exxon Broadcast Network 24-7, 365, and you want to hear them on your phone that you carry with you all the time, 605-477-9614 will get you to all your favorite programming here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Also, would like to invite you to visit uh, my show as often as possible at www.paranormalstakeout.com. You can also find me at uh, Florida Bureau of Paranormal Investigation and Indian River Hauntings on Facebook. I do also want to mention uh, Keith's website, idigitalmedium.com. Visit him for more information on the group, what that group is doing. Um, Keith, where do you see the future of paranormal research investigation going? In your opinion, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I think uh, everybody's going to eventually realize that they have their own superpowers. There's going to mm. be people that are going to come out with some amazing things, and we're going to say, "Holy crap!" You know, it's going to be like uh, American Idol for the paranormal, and it's going <laughs> to be start occurring over and over and over and over, and then people are going to eventually realize that we're all special, that we all have that. Uh, so. You know, with the synthetic streams and development streams or whatever fancy name I come up with for them, uh, they'll come out, and the people that are interested, they'll see them. And, um, we're, you know, we're going to have to learn together what that right. means. We're going to have to educate ourselves together. There is a danger. Like you said, everything needs to be presented with education. You can't just throw stuff out there and expect, you know, people to be safe. It's like, you know, driving a car or anything else that we invent. So I think uh, we're going to start looking inward, and a lot of people already are. The evidence and, is great, but the best evidence is going to come once we develop each of one of ourselves individually. Well, you know, I agree with you in a whole lot of areas. I do believe that a lot of your your uh, information that you presented tonight really tends to, in my opinion, gravitate towards the power of our own mind, perhaps uh, generating a lot of different evidence. I do also believe our future of our um, field is going to be in education. Uh, I do believe, and I think you mentioned it before, a group coming together to uh, to decide on standards and training and where we're going to go. But but you yourself, iDigital Media, you got you got a beautiful website. Uh, you've got certainly got some uh, talented folks on your staff. But I'm concerned, Keith. I got to be honest with you. I'm concerned over the fact that you're doing all these things but you're straying from using the scientific method because I think without that, without you conducting these experiments with those parameters, you're, you're missing the opportunity to make a deeper impact. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but I really, I really want to encourage you to think about recording documentation and preservation. Just a thought on my end of it. Yeah, what say you? Certainly. Well, I certainly agree, and you're not the first person to mention it. That has also come, shall we say, directly from spirit. And so as I evolve as a person, as a, as the team evolves, you know, it'll become more clear how exactly we can do that, because you know, we're not trained in a scientific method. So well, these things take some time, you know. And, and see, that's another area where I'm coming from also, and, and one of, the, one of my uh, uh, soapboxes, if you will, is the education training of those in the field. Um, your work with uh, with all the ITC and radio and everything is so important because I really see that as a possible gateway to the future. But more folks have to really understand the science behind it before they can understand what the evidence means. Would you agree? I would agree, and I'm still trying to understand what exactly that science is. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, Yes, I would agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've become fascinated with the fact that um, uh, frequency 
and vibration has become such a very big part of it. And I also believe that's an issue why you'll get a voice on one recorder and not one right next to it because of different mm-hmm. frequencies and fire vibrations that are different in each piece of equipment. And I think that's one possibility. But there's an area that needs to be investigated. Your work, the things that you've done, fascinating stuff. But until you are able to in, collect that evidence and examine it um, skeptically, you're going to have problems getting it out there and getting people to believe it. And that's just my opinion. Of um, course, and that's why I, ha- I haven't highlighted it yet. But um, I mean, one of my, my actually my personal goal is to have conversations. Or if I can sit there and I can listen to a sound that nobody can understand anything from, and I can relay conversation directly to someone. Then at that point, I'll be, be able to present evidence. I don't feel that at the, you know, the presenting stage yet. Oh, and, and, and probably mm-hmm. not because there's a lot of experimentation to do and there's a lot of mm-hmm. standardization that we gotta, we've got we got to do uh, during sure. during these, ex- these events so that we can quantify them, so we can learn from them, so we can take that data out and, and, and study it. Um, so that's that's really where I, I I really want to see your organization go with that because I think I think the the passion certainly there. That is um, that is our plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, the way I look at it is, you could say it's rather optimistic, uh, perhaps too optimistic, but I shoot for the ultimate goal. Uh, the ultimate goal is in um, when I wake up every day, or the way I I see it is, it's a it's already a fact in the future, and so every day I work towards that. And I'm okay with it taking however long it needs to take until it is be, be able to be presented as evidence. And, and it's kind of something that I, I've accepted. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Patience, perseverance, absolutely paramount in this field. We, we yes, must move definitely. forward. There's going to be a lot of roadblocks. But, Keith, we've got to do it in such a way that the evidence is going to be accepted and that, that what we're doing has some sort of validity to it. And that's that's one of the reasons why I'm pushing forward standardization and training at some level in the field so that, you know, you're doing your experiments and another group over here is doing a similar type of experiment. If you two are using the same parameters, the same methods, then as you get that information, they can be compared and more information can be extrapolated from it. And we get closer to actually uh, finding that answer to the other side and that's where i want to go and that's where i want to see groups like yours go to uh, tr- get trained to understand the science behind of what you're doing and that is not keith to downplay the spiritual side of it as a cop intuition is something i've used my entire career you got a gut feeling on something and you go with it so i totally understand that but there's got to be a mixture of the two because i can't go to court with on, with a case right with feelings of belief. I got to go to court with, with evidence and some of that evidence is derived from having a gut feeling. So there's a place for both of it. Would you agree? I would agree. And uh, really quick, you know how they say whenever somebody has a good idea, it's never just one person at the same, you know, there's always multiple people, people has the same idea. Right. I can tell you that what, what you just said is moving across the community and sweeping in different directions. Not only from our side, but also like Tim Woolworth with ITC Voices, he's working on actual an actual course, which mm-hmm. is so important. So it, it's so much work that you know most of us you know don't begin it. It's actually something where he's hoping to get to have different people come in, um, you know, and present on their different areas, and also the, the historical aspect of it. But you're right; it, it is a lot of work, and the only way we can do it successfully is to be a team. You know, there's a lot of individuals, but right. Well, yeah, well, I mean, and people can move as individuals too, Keith. But uh, and I think with a structure, sure. But with a structure and an understanding of not only the, the the spiritual side of it, but also the scientific side of it, those two things have to come together. Uh, and we're working towards that now. Those things have to come together. So uh, once again, I really want to encourage you. Doing some great work out there, but I really want to encourage you to take a Keep the, keep the spiritual end of it, but also start working on the scientific end of it and, and start preserving this evidence, recording it. Uh, I think it's going to help your it's going to help you in your field and it's going to help the uh, entire paranormal world in general. 
So we we'll hear you and accept. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Um, well, folks, I want to again offer you the opportunity to hear all of the wonderful programming on the Exome Broadcast Network. Go to www.paradigm.com. Um, xzbn.net and in there you'll see www.paranormalstakeout.com join us for all the terrific programming on that um keith i want to thank you very very much for joining us tonight and again i want to encourage you keep keep up the work well let's start doing the using the scientific method let's start gathering the evidence and collecting that evidence and uh, i wish you a lot of luck uh, in the future uh and you and your team my pleasure. Thank you, Larry. Okay, thank you for joining us. Folks, this is a Paranormal Stakeout with Larry Lawson. Hope to see you next week when we'll have another program. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the other side. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. 
You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.